Hello. I get lots and lots of emails sent to me every day. Some are video suggestions, some are argument rebuttals, some are messages of support, and some are just plain old hate mail. I received one email a few days ago from Andy, a fellow from the UK. Intended as a simple message of support, he included an extract from his great uncle's war diary and added some commentary himself towards the end. After reading the email, I knew it was something that should be shared with my audience. The diary extract, as well as the commentary, gave me a clearer perspective on an issue we constantly hear feminists complaining about today. Andy's great uncle was a flight sergeant in the RAF who was shot down during an Allied bombing raid behind enemy lines in April of 1944. Four days later, he was captured, interrogated and subsequently held in various POW camps throughout Germany and Poland. The following entry was made on the 9th of August 1944 and details the transportation of prisoners between camps. For the past few days, we have been hearing rumours that we will be soon on the move again, and today we saw the orders posted up that we would be moving today at 2pm. I packed all my kit again and was all ready to move. We marched down to the station and it took us two hours to get there. It was very hot and the going was rough, and very soon everyone was feeling the heat and sweating like hell. But all made it with two five-minute rests on the way. All the civilians lined the roads in Thorn and gave us a send-off. When we arrived at the station we were again packed into cattle trucks and into this small compartment 18 men were packed with all their kit. When night came we found that we couldn't all be down at once, so we had to divide the men into two shifts. While one shift lay down and slept for two hours, the others sat on a plank down one end of the truck. This went on for two nights. The journey was the worst one we'd had so far. There was no sanitary arrangements and no windows in the trucks, and the only way we could see what was, was by cutting holes in the sides of the truck. Every time the train stopped, the Kriegies would get out and line up on the embankment to do whatever they wanted to do. One afternoon this happened and a German woman looked over the hedge and saw all the boys lined up. She just went red and stood there and stared. She must have been too surprised to do anything else. I'll bet she never forgets that sight as long as she lives. The journey lasted two and a half days and we had to put up with these conditions until we reached Fallingbostel, which is a village in the middle of the triangle formed by Hanover, Bremen and Hamburg. Fallingbostel is a small village with a very big marshalling yard. One of the first things we saw was a woman throwing barrels of pilsner about as if they were feathers, but she never threw any airway. Then we were lined up and counted on the platform. On the other side of the station there were a shower of girls and of course all the boys started whistling and shouting across to them and the girls would laugh and shout something back in German, but for all I knew they may have been swearing at us. As soon as they had counted us and found us correct, they marched us off the station and we started for the next camp. Andy goes on to close the email by saying, Having read the whole diary, it becomes extremely apparent that small moments of normality like this provided just enough of a reprieve and a reminder of the freedom they were fighting for to keep these men going in the face of such unimaginable treatment. Whilst I greatly applaud your efforts in combating feminazis, it was through the sacrifice of these brave men and countless others like them who fought the real ones all those years ago, which allows us to have the freedoms we have today. I'm sure every man from that greatest of generations would have your back as you fight to protect those very same freedoms today. Keep it up, you massive grizzly cunt.